Welcome to the Live Free, Love Life podcast, where we discuss how to create more freedom so we can love our lives no matter what we're going through. Hello, my friends. Welcome to today's episode of Live Free, Love Life. Today, we are going to talk about a bit of a, I would say, controversial topic, maybe. Not really controversial, more like a topic that people just don't want to think about or aren't interested in. And this comes from a lot of experience coaching my clients. So the topic today is forgiveness as a gift that you give yourself using forgiveness to break free. Holding on to resentment, anger, and blame often feels justified. Someone hurt us, so they deserve our wrath, right? But in reality, choosing forgiveness sets us free, while holding on just imprisons us further. So today we're going to talk about how forgiveness serves as an empowering tool to help you heal and liberate yourself. When I am thinking about what I want to talk to you about on this podcast, I'm thinking about the things that are holding you back, the things that are the shackles of your life, the things that keep you from the freedom that you crave, the freedom that allows you to fully embrace and love your life and live a life of peace and joy. Not forgiving is one of those things. And many of my clients, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to forgive the person because that person deserves whatever they get. The person doesn't deserve their forgiveness. But the thing we have to realize is you don't deserve to hold on to that resentment. This isn't about them. It is about you and what you deserve. So let's first clarify what forgiveness is and what it isn't. Forgiveness does not mean excusing bad behavior. It doesn't mean justifying a wrong. It doesn't mean reconciling a relationship. You can forgive someone and still maintain boundaries against further harm, leave a toxic situation, press charges against misconduct, and discontinue contact. Forgiveness simply means releasing resentment and giving up the right to punish someone for their actions. It is making peace with pain. Forgiveness is a personal act for your healing, not for the benefit of the person who hurt you. So how does forgiveness set you free? Not forgiving someone who caused you harm can feel like you're taking your power back over the situation. But in reality, refusing to forgive only hurts you, not them. It's like wanting to poison them for what they've done, but then drinking the poison yourself. Here is how harboring resentment keeps you ensnared. Emotional bondage. Holding on to anger chains you emotionally to the one who hurt you. They occupy your mental real estate. Stolen joy. Resentment clouds your mind and steals your joy. You lose the present moment. Stunted Growth. Clinging to pain stunts your personal growth and evolution. You stay stuck in victimhood. Lost energy. Vengeful thoughts drain your mental and physical energy. This limits creativity and productivity. Poisoned other relationships. Unresolved anger often seeps into and damages other areas of your life. Worsened trauma symptoms. Bitterness exacerbates post traumatic stress responses like anxiety and depression. Physical illness. Chronic anger biologically stresses the body and depletes health over time. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, forgiveness is not an occasional act. It is a permanent attitude. It's an ongoing mindset that sets you free from the past. So now you have a better picture of why you might want to choose forgiveness. But how do we actually do that? Forgiving someone who caused deep wounds takes time and patience. Don't rush or force yourself before you're ready. Consider these steps. Number one, release the expectation that forgiveness should happen immediately. Give yourself space to process complex feelings first. Number two, accept the full pain of what happened to open the door for healing. Suppressing facts only delays progress. Number three, Let go of the fantasy of a perfect apology or karma. Justice is often unattainable. Focus on your emotional healing 
instead. Number four, dig beneath the anger to observe any hurt, grief, or vulnerability. Address these core wounds with self-compassion. Number five, imagine yourself in the shoes of the one who hurt you. Seek any common ground in the human experience. Now, remember, this is any common ground in the human experience. This does not mean you would ever do what they did. Find any common ground you can find. For example, sometimes I'm not my best either. Sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes I have a bad day. I don't know what it is. Find any common ground you can. Number six, release the burden of judgment and acknowledge how suffering begets more suffering. We all have room to grow. Number seven, perform a symbolic ritual like writing a letter of understanding or anger release. Mark the desire to move forward. Some of my very favorite things for this in my program, I actually have a Taoist forgiveness ritual, which is amazing. I also love the Hawaiian ritual of Ho'oponopono, very powerful for forgiveness. You could probably find some forgiveness meditation, maybe on YouTube or something. You can write the letter and burn it. You can have any sort of symbolic ritual, any kind of thing that's going to help you to move forward. Number eight, cultivate empathy for both yourself as a victim and the flawed humanity of those who do harm. Number nine, make space to gain perspective on how the situation served your growth. Find meaning. And number 10, Celebrate forgiveness as a marker of your personal power, not weakness. It takes courageous resilience. Think of forgiveness as cleansing your psyche and freeing yourself from the past hold over you. It allows you to move forward unburdened. You may have been a victim of their behavior, but you don't have to stay a victim. You don't have to give them the power to keep hurting you. Now, here is the very most important thing to remember. The most important person to forgive is yourself. And ironically, it's also what makes forgiving anyone else easier. You did the very best you were capable of in the moment. If you could have done better, you would have. The you who did that didn't know what you know now. They didn't have the same data knowledge, wisdom, skills, or experience as you do now. They weren't feeling the way you are now. They did their best in that moment. How can you expect more of yourself than your best? The more you forgive yourself, the easier it will be to forgive others. The more you see how you were doing your best, even if your best was terrible, the easier it will be to see how others are doing their best, even if their best is terrible. If you only forgive one person, forgive yourself. You are enough exactly as you are. You are just a human doing their best. You deserve forgiveness. And forgiving yourself will give you more freedom than you can possibly imagine. Now, here are some questions to consider. Number one, where are you holding on to a grudge? And how is it holding you back? Number two, where are you holding on to resentment or anger? And how is it holding you back? Number three, what have you not forgiven yourself for? Why? How might that be holding you back from what you want? And number four, what will it take to choose forgiveness as a gift you give yourself? Forgiveness is never for them. It is a gift for you. When grappling whether or not to forgive someone who caused you harm, remember, you aren't absolving their wrongdoing or entitling them to your trust. You are benefiting yourself, body, mind, and soul. For you, not them. Forgiveness is the ultimate act of honoring your inner power and resilience. 
It takes courage to break free from resentment's grip. But you hold the key to your emotional liberty. Assuming ownership of your state of mind is the path to profound freedom. Live free, love life. Thank you for watching this episode of Live Free, Love Life. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like, comment, and share. See you next time.